Welcome. My name is Alan Clues. I'm the Toronto Hypnotherapist, torontohypnotherapist.com, and I'm here with a group of people, and we're going to do a group hypnosis session. So I'd like you to begin by becoming aware of the position of your body in space. And I don't know if you can quite see, but I'm also here with my dog, Philo, just leaning in to me. So become aware of the position of your body in space. Perhaps you can become aware of your arms and your legs, your hands and your fingers. Perhaps you can just gently begin to allow your body to relax a little deeper, to move into a quieter, calmer state of comfort and relaxation. Just focusing, perhaps, on the sensation of air as it flows in through your nose, to your lungs and back out again. Becoming mindful of the flow of air perhaps even tracing it in through your nostrils, nasal cavity, back of mouth, throat, past your vocal cords, down into your lungs and back out again, aware of this journey of air as it flows in and out. And then also become aware of the various muscles involved in breathing. The primary engine of our breath and breathing is the abd is the solar plexus, the diaphragm, the diaphragm, that parachute-shaped muscle. As it expands down the diaphragmic cavity, it pushes the abdomen out and causes the intercostal muscles between the ribs to expand. And as it contracts back up, abdominal muscles contract, the muscles between the ribs contract. So become aware of the movement of the muscles involved. And I'm going to focus in this hypnotic guided hypnosis session on anxiety, on the anxiety response. So as you remain aware of the sensation of air flowing in and out, the movement of the various muscles involved, your diaphragm abdomen, the muscles between your ribs, the sensation of air flowing in and out. Also, become aware of the fact that as you breathe in, you are feeding your body, but even more importantly, as you breathe out, you are cleansing and detoxifying your body. As you breathe in, the molecules of oxygen in the air get squeezed through the lining in your lungs into your bloodstream. And the noxious gases, the carbon dioxide and other waste products from within the blood get squeezed back and breathed out. Scientists estimate that 70, that's 7-0, 70 percent of the body's waste products are exhaled. Now, the anxiety process starts about an inch and a half behind each eye in the amygdala, which sends a signal to the hypothalamus almost in the center of the head, which then sends a signal to the pituitary, which secretes an anxiety-related hormone into your bloodstream called ACTH, adrenal cortisol tropic hormone. This acts like a key and turns on your adrenal glands, that war factory in the body, which then begins to flood your bloodstream with adrenaline, cortisol, and various other substances that are all related to anxiety. So the suggestion that I would like to implant in you as you allow yourself to relax a little deeper, as you allow yourself to move into a deeper state of comfort, is to 
in the coming days, perhaps weeks, perhaps even next month, allow your attention to return to your breath, monitoring your breath and making sure that you breathe out properly, focusing not so much on the inhaling as on the exhaling. Adrenal cortisol, tropic hormone, adrenaline, cortisol, they're blood-borne. And the way we detoxify the blood, the way we remove those biochemicals and hormones from our body is through breathing out. And so this is probably one of the most important tools we have for dealing with anxiety consciously breathing, breathing with mindful awareness, breathing with intent, really making sure to breathe in properly, but even more important, to breathe out properly. So the suggestion to become more aware of your breathing, to become more aware of your out breath, to really make sure that you breathe properly, you take full breaths down, filling your lungs and exhaling properly. Because unfortunately, people who suffer from anxiety often hold their breath and they often only breathe in from the top part of the lungs. So just allow yourself to relax a little deeper relaxing the muscles in your face, your forehead, letting go deep within your eyebrows, relaxing the muscles in your nose, your lips, your chin, even allowing your cheeks, your cheekbones, your jaw, your jawbone to relax even deeper. Using your breath, slowing your breath down, aware of the sensation of air, flowing in and even more importantly, it flowing back out. Aware of the movement of the various muscles involved, allowing your breath to lead you into a deeper state of comfort is so important. The ability to let go even deeper as you focus on certain things will begin to change perhaps allowing your mind to slow down and move into a comfortable, calmer state of awareness. And perhaps tonight, or maybe even tomorrow or the next day, you might find yourself aware of your breathing. You might find yourself breathing mindfully and make sure that you exhale properly. If you focus on the out-breath, if you focus on breathing out, on detoxifying the body, your in-breath will naturally happen as it should. So just focusing on your breath, on your breathing, on the sensation of air, allowing your breath to help you move into a deeper state of relaxation is so important the ability to just let go a little deeper and become more relaxed. And I would like you to focus on the muscles in your face. Relax your whole face. Just allow your face to relax. And they say that there's a way we can relatively easily go to sleep and I'm going to outline this process right now. So focus on the muscles in your face and relax your face as deeply as you can. From your forehead down to your chin and jaw, relaxing your forehead, your eyebrows, really striving within your eyes to just let go and relax your eyes as deeply as you can, relaxing the muscle in your nose, your lips, your cheeks, down to your jaw, 
just allowing the sense of relaxation is so important. The ability to just let go from your forehead down to your chin and jaw, relaxing your face. And then they said the next thing is to relax from your shoulders down to your lower back, to almost imagine perhaps as if you were floating, as if you were in water and just allowing the relaxation to seep down from your shoulder blades, down through your middle back, down to your lower back relaxing all of the muscles in your back deeper and deeper, more and more. And the third part, they said, was to relax your legs, to just allow this relaxation to float down from your upper legs, your thighs and hamstrings, down through your knees, down into your lower legs, down into your ankles, down into your feet, and relaxing the muscles in your feet as deeply as you can. To relax from the upper legs, your thighs, your hamstrings, your knees, your shins, your calves, down to the tip of your toes and the bottom of your feet. So this threefold sense of relaxation to relax the muscles in your face, from your forehead, down to your chin and jaw, and then to relax the muscles in your back, from your shoulders, upper shoulder blades, down through your middle back, down to your lower back, and then to relax your legs, from your upper legs, your thighs and hamstrings, down through your knees, your shins, your calves, your ankles, down through your feet, to your toes, heels, the bottom of your feet. Engaging in this threefold process of relaxation. Now this is something that you can do at bedtime to help ease your body into a deeper state of relaxation. But it's also something you can do throughout the day to relax your face all the way down, your back all the way down, and your legs all the way down. And they said, when you've got your body into this nice deep state of relaxation, to just allow your mind to go into a quiet state to silence the words in your mind, to keep your mind still, tranquil, calm, serene, to try to do this for at least a minimum of 10 seconds. Just keeping your mind clear, almost as if you were in a meditative state. They said the most important part was to still, quieten, stop the words and pictures that normally flow in your mind. And this is a good exercise to do any time you feel a little bit of anxiety rising within you. Any time you begin to feel a little anxious, a little concerned, a little worried, to just relax your body, your face, your back, your legs, to clear your mind, to calm your mind. Now there are other things we can do, but I would like you to focus on certain words can be used that can help you move into a calmer, more peaceful, State of comfort is such an interesting feeling to feel the air as it touches. Your face can relax a little deeper as you realize that these words are spoken in such a way that it's a little bit more difficult to follow. These words can be used to help you 
Just let go of all of the muscles in your face towards that comfortable awareness of just going deeper, deeper and deeper. And perhaps you can imagine that you are standing at the top of a hill at twilight. The sun has gone down. It's that magical interstate period. The stars haven't quite come out yet. And imagine walking down the hill. And each step that you take as you walk down the hill you feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper into a nice hypnotic state, into a tranquil state, and going deeper and deeper into the state where your subconscious mind is unable to reject the suggestion to become more conscious of your breathing, perhaps tomorrow or the next day or even next week, to realize the importance of breathing out and allowing your body to detoxify. Just bringing this into a certain way of just moving from here to there. And we can allow these things to move in the way that they want to move and into that comfort of just sinking a little deeper inwards, sinking a little further into that calm state of deep serenity is such an interesting word to experience. This word within your body can just relax a little deeper as you allow your subconscious mind to come to the forefront, allowing your subconscious mind to accept the suggestion to just relax even deeper, even deeper relaxing, that's right. Focusing on certain things are changing within you, those chemicals and biochemicals and hormones are easily and effortlessly being breathed out. Every time you breathe out, you detoxify the body, you get rid of these hormones and biochemicals connected to anxiety begins to dissipate. Now it's important to recognize that there are other effects of anxiety. Anxiety is the fight flight or freeze response. And when we are in a state of anxiety, the blood is pulled away from non-essential parts of the body into the large muscles so we can fight or run. This means that the blood is pulled away from the higher parts of the brain, from the neocortex, so we do not think as clearly or as deeply. Our thoughts tend to be more scattered. Another side effect is that the blood is pulled away from our stomach. If we're running to protect our life, we do not need to digest food. So people who suffer from anxiety notice this in their mind. They notice it in their thoughts. They notice it in their digestive process, their gastrointestinal tract. And the third thing is we do not need to have the immune system fully engaged. That requires a lot of the body's resources. So it gets turned down and we become susceptible to all sorts of things will now begin to change in such a positive way to understand the importance of relaxing the muscles in your face towards letting go in your back towards that understanding of just releasing all of the tension in your legs just relax even more and they say it can take up to six hours 
for the body to detoxify from anxiety-related chemicals and hormones. So being anxious in the evening will inhibit our ability to go to sleep will become easier as you focus more on breathing and breathing out and making sure that you drink a lot of fresh, clean water, that you avoid sugary foods, foods filled with fat or fried foods because that just creates a loop that feeds anxiety. So eating more plant-based, wholemeal, simple foods is the proper diet to counteract it. And so you will notice that you are drawn to foods that are good for you, are doing so well, allowing yourself to relax a little deeper into a state of tranquility is such an important feeling to feel the air as it touches, your face relaxes, your back relaxes, your legs relax deeper and deeper, more and more. Now there's an anxiety circuit in the body. It starts in the amygdala, moves to the hypothalamus, goes to the pituitary, and then down to the adrenal glands sitting on top of our kidneys in our lower back. The adrenal glands are about an inch and a half behind each eye. The hypothalamus is just almost but slightly above the center of your head, right in the center. And immediately below is the pituitary. And the pituitary is like a drop coming down from the ceiling. It's got a little bulb at the bottom and it then secretes hormones into the bloodstream, which flow down to the adrenal glands in your lower back of your back, sitting on top of your kidneys. This is the amygdalaic, hypothalamic, pituitary adrenal axis that's primarily responsible for the anxiety response. So perhaps you can sense that area behind your eyes into the center of your head down to the tops of your kidneys, your adrenal glands. Imagine this is a circuit. Imagine it as a circuit like a heating coil like an electric heater. Imagine it being red hot, glowing, overheating. And imagine that there's a thermostat that controls it. And imagine that you can see this thermostat, that you reach out for this thermostat, and you put your fingers on the dial, and you try to turn it down, but it doesn't move. And then imagine you have a tool kit and you can use a screwdriver and you can take off the faceplate and you see it's all gunked up and dirty and you have a brush and a vacuum and you have cotton swabs and various things necessary to clean the inside of this thermostat connected to your anxiety circuit. Perhaps a part is broken and you have the replacement and you replace it and you fix the thermostat. Clean, like brand new, you put on the faceplate, you screw it back in. And this time, when you reach to turn it down, that dial moves down. And as the dial moves down, a cool burst of arctic wind blows <coughs> against your amygdala, calming, cooling your amygdala down. And as that thermostat goes down, your hypothalamus and your pituitary begin to secrete calming molecules, cooling the circuit down, so that as it reaches your adrenal glands in your lower back, 
that your adrenal glands get turned off. Imagine the circuit that was once glowing red hot, cooling down to blue. Imagine your pituitary gland now secreting beta endorphins, molecules of relaxation and healing. Imagine the blood flows back into the higher parts of your brain. Imagine the blood flowing into your stomach as this circuit calms down more and more. And perhaps you can even imagine that you are in a desert and the desert is so dry, it's parched. Nothing is alive, it's so dry. And you look down and you notice that you're standing on the shore, on the bank of an old river. You see the riverbed sort of sloping beneath you and rising up to the far bank, but it's so dry. And then imagine in the distance, you see it get darker and darker and darker. You hear thunder, you see lightning, you feel that moistness, that humidity coming to the air. And at first you see a trickle of water flowing down the center of the dry riverbed and that trickle turns into a stream which turns into a river and the river comes to life and fish are in it and green plants and life are on the banks and within the river and as you see that water return to the river Bring your awareness to your stomach and imagine the blood flowing back into your stomach. Imagine the blood flowing back into your digestive system, healing your stomach, healing your digestive system. Imagine the blood flowing into the neocortex and the higher parts of your brain, allowing you to think deeply, to think clearly. Imagine standing by the bank of that river, watching the water flowing. Just watching that moving water, bringing life back to the region. Seeing the plants growing, seeing the weeds in the bottom of the river, the fish, the guppies. Life returning, and imagine life returning to your stomach. Life returning to your brain, allowing all of these things to happen. Because you are now more aware of your breath. You are now more aware of the importance of breathing out, of exhaling fully, using your breath to detoxify your blood, using your out-breath to remove all of those anxiety-related chemicals and hormones, allowing your breath to switch from the parasympathetic nervous system, the fight-flight-or-freeze nervous system over to the parasympathetic nervous system, allowing those molecules of relaxation and healing to flow through your blood and calm your heart down and lowering your blood pressure and you crave foods that are good for you are doing so well allowing your subconscious mind to accept these suggestions the suggestion to eat more plant-based foods the suggestion to eat more whole meal, more foods that are good for you are doing so well, and you begin to develop an aversion to sugary foods, to processed foods, to salty foods, to fatty foods, to fried foods, to foods that prolong the anxiety and feed the anxiety, because you are now a healthy person eating properly, eating good nutritious foods, breathing properly, focusing and consciously aware 
of breathing out and detoxifying your body, just allowing all of these things to happen, allowing it to slowly begin to change, changing the nature of your breath, making sure that you are aware of just breathing out at your own rhythm of breathing, but making sure that at night you take some nice proper breaths before bedtime, breathing in perhaps for a count of four and breathing out for a count of eight, knowing that if you breathe out properly, you will breathe in properly recognizing the detoxifying effect of breathing out, cleansing your blood, just allowing the flow of water to return to that dry riverbed, the flow of blood to return to your stomach and your digestive system, the flow of blood to return to the higher parts of your brain now begins to think more clearly, calmly, able to look at the world and interact in a more relaxed fashion, in a more peaceful fashion. And I would like you to now slowly begin the process of returning to normal waking awareness, just slowly allowing yourself to begin to return to normal waking awareness as I count from one up to five. One, begin returning, become aware of your body, begin re-entering your body or coming back from those subconscious depths. Two, perhaps moving your fingers and toes ever so slightly. Three, perhaps stretching your body. Four, four, allowing your eyelids to flutter open. And five, opening your eyes, opening your eyes, recognizing the important role that breathing out plays in this detoxification process and helping you to calm down and overcome your anxiety.